So we're talking about paints. In this video, we're going to talk about paint consistency. And boy, what a meandering, uh, very political tabletop minions answer do we have to this question as well. <laughs> because it's like, well, it doesn't matter, but it does. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that people ask all the time. People are asking all the time about like, well, what about, um, you know, what paints are best? What should I use? And it's kind of like, like, I remember years and years ago, my dad was like, I'm just going to wait till they make the best computer, and then I'll buy that one. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Just yeah, just and, still and, holding out for that. Right, and it just doesn't work out. So you have to, you know, you, you have to understand that um, there are people who will love a specific paint, and there are other people who absolutely hate that exact same specific paint, and it is a lot of personal preference. But when you are trying to pick a paint, you are looking for very specific... I don't know, like qualities, I guess. Yeah, you, you want it to work for you. Um, I think so. One of the the uh, characteristics that lays out there is thick paint versus thin paint. Sure. I like P3 paints a lot. Um, they they have the silky consistency that transfers to the airbrush nicely. So I'm spraying with the the same tones that I'm painting mm -hmm, with. Mm -hmm. You just have to water it but, down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. of course you know I'm always you know diluting things for the airbrush, mm -hmm. but it, it mixes down nicely. But then on the other side of the spectrum, I like to wet blend a lot. For sure. that, I want to paint with a thicker consistency. I can manipulate everything to fit into the airbrush, but so you've got this thick versus thin, mm -hmm. and well, and so me being not a big pro painter, I like to dry brush. I do dry brushing a lot, and it's really hard to dry brush with a really thin paint or a really yeah. wet paint. Yeah. So there are times when I'll have like, this is the exact color I want, but it's a pretty thin paint, and I will put it on a little piece of plastic, and I'll let it sit for like five minutes just in the open air to sort of like dry a little oh, bit, nice. and then yeah. I will start doing my dry brushing. <laughs> but like for me, like GW paints, because they do have a tendency to be a bit thicker, mm -hmm. um, they, for me, are, are better for, for dry brushing, but if I'm trying to do any kind of blending, yeah, then it's, you know. Some, yeah, man, so if you were to look at my, my paint collection, mm -hmm. it is a collection because it's not a set. It's no, yeah, yeah, this no. hybrid Frankenstein assemblage. Do you, you know, think there's any pro or even any good painter out there that only has one brand of paint in their, in their palette? There's has to be one. <laughs> it's a quantum. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good potentials, point. but but for the most part, generally no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I'm just gonna say it here first, no. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I've used so many different ranges of paint. I can get them all to work for me. Mm -hmm. um, recently, I've been using the Monument paints from mm -hmm. Creature Caster Flash uh, Monument. Monument. Yep. Yeah, I got my hands on them. I've been working on a project, trying to use as many of those as possible. I'm really enjoying those, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but guess what? I had zero problems with my paint before that. Sure, I just yeah. I like these ones a lot right now. I like P3s. I use Vallejo. I use Games Workshop paints. So that, what I'd really like to tell people is, there are problem colors to look out for. Right. That based on that that uh, that recipe, um, you know, some standout colors that are usually difficult are the color white, mm -hmm. red, mm -hmm. and yellow. Right. It just seems to be what, what people are telling me. Hard to work with. That's just, it's generally yeah. partially. Yeah, like it's you know like the, people uh, people ask all the time about how to paint like say imperial fists mm -hmm. because they're yellow. You know it, what I mean? Yeah. Or lamenters and that kind of stuff. It, it creates this like uh, double amount of, of effort sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I I found like I like a bunch of the GW contrast paints except for ultramarine blue. I've, t I've mentioned it several times in like live shows and stuff that I've done. Like yeah. that color doesn't do the contrast thing that most of the other colors do. I've noticed, yeah. Right, and so, you know, that's the thing. that In every line, there's always like standouts. There's like a color, like for Vallejo, one of my favorite non-metallic colors is uh, basalt gray. Mm. Like it's just got like this right color yeah, that I yeah. use for a lot of different things, like, like especially a basing. Tan, right? It's, it's got a touch of it, the, maybe just yeah. A, yeah, yeah. And I just really like to use that, or um, even there. I think it's either black gray or gray black. I use both of those colors a lot in basing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I like you know, as, and then hide you know highlight up from that. But those two colors are are great. But there are other colors you know in Vallejo that I'm like, mm, that's not so much what I want. Um, I'm always chasing a really good like bleached bone. Oh yeah, you know, like Finding a little, right light, a little lighter than ivory, maybe or right around. Yeah, no. Yeah. I like to I use um, Vallejo Buff 
and that's more of a yellow ivory mm -hmm. and then ushtabi bone is like a it's it's funny if you if you put them next to each other you can see a big difference yeah if but you, you keep them apart yep yeah like, oh, and oh, that's, that's the way nice colors always that's, work that's yeah. great yeah yeah no i mean it's it's really <laughs> interesting too because people i think that don't understand color theory or are just new to the hobby and haven't looked into it like when you talk about like a warm red versus a cold red like that like red is a is a warm color generally if you look at colors like the reds the oranges and the yellows are warm yeah and then the blues the greens and the purples are cool it's kind of like Fire oh, yeah. is those colors and water is those colors. That's how the way it works. But you can have a cool red because it's a red that's heading a little bit more towards blue on the color wheel, whereas well, a red that's got more towards the orange on the color wheel becomes more of a warm red. And you can have the same with tans and, and all the, kinds of stuff. Those subtleties pop out more when you have a complementary or a contrasting color. Like um, I've got a warm red uh, armor tone, yeah. but maybe I have black shoulder pads. Like even the color black, which oh, yeah. you can see on your sweatshirt, there's like warm and cold versions. Right. You oh, can yeah. see the yellow light coming from behind you, making mm -hmm. a warm black. I know he's wearing a black sweatshirt. Um, yeah, just a little like yeah. side tangent, but I, I always try to mix some either cold or warm into the black tones, mm -hmm. depending on what else is happening. Um, and and f finding those colors that work well. Now, what about what about when you mix colors? When you take a color from, let's say, P3, and you mix it with a color from Games Workshop or Vallejo, have you ever had Oil a problem? Water. Really? They, they just want to no, no. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Separate, but I because people will will hear that. People will be yeah. like, "Well, I can't mix these two brands together," and that's, <laughs> that's a, generally that's a, that I've I've never come across. That's a that. weird one. It's, yeah, it's yeah. all the same stuff. It's paint. Yeah, it, it loves chemical other, breakdowns are different. Yeah. The 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 substrate or whatever they call not the medium but the yeah, there's a word for it. It's technical right. term. I can't think what it is, but that stuff's in there, and that's fine. And the way that the pigment is floating in it and all that stuff. Everyone's got their own deal. Reaper, um, Vallejo, um, Secret Weapon, all those guys. But the most important thing generally amongst miniature painting, I think, is the size of the pigment. Yeah. Which is why you don't go with the stuff usually that you get at Walmart. The Yes. Like Gold Apple or whatever. The American Apple App Barrel. Apple Barrel, like, excuse me. Golden yeah. Apple or yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah. yeah. That stuff's great for terrain. <laughs> I've used I still use it for terrain. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it has its use. But it's, uh, yeah, it's hard to use it on miniatures because the pigment's so large generally. Mm -hmm. Finer pigment costs more money and that's the way that, that and this works. And is, this is something I learned from working at the tattoo shop. Mm -hmm. Being told that white ink and red ink are the hardest for the body to absorb. Like red being at the top because it's funny how this rule, you know, about the, the size of these atoms in the paint applies to any other combination to create that pigment. Yeah, yeah. You're always having to include uh, cyanide or whatever it is that sure. takes to make for that white red. it's frequently titanium i think from what i remember from art from art yeah. school yeah 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 man yeah i use titanium white a lot yeah but i i give it an extra mix when i think sure, it's combined yeah. because it's such a thick and heavy bodied pigment yeah yeah um when i was in like middle school and you used tempera paints you remember tempera paints yeah. where it's the powder and you add water to it Whenever you tried oh, to mix, the, whenever you tried to mix the red stuff, like it would just float on the top, and it was really hard to mix. Yep. I remember asking my art teacher about it, and he was like, "Yeah, red's like one of the hardest pigments to work with," and I, white's got some of that same sort of thing. I have found so speaking on the like, it's hard to use, it's easy to use. Mm -hmm. People tell me they're like, "I have a problem painting yellow." I have not had a problem painting yellow, okay. but I think why this is because I always mix other colors into it. Like I'm, I'm painting the Imperial yeah. Fist. What color is the shadow? Well, it's brown. So I have a touch of brown, an easy color to work with, mm -hmm. or say like a more of a terracotta, you know, mm -hmm. a warmer brown mixed in with that yellow at a certain point. And then maybe I'll throw a little bit of ivory into it in the brighter air. So I've got, I didn't think about this too hard until and recently I've got these like kind of um, helper colors. Well, that's mixed the into thing. It. Do you think that hmm. too many people try to shade and highlight with just straight black and straight white and that cause I mean because if you just add black to yellow you're you, gonna you get, get like mush. green you, yeah you get a green color which yeah. can be fun if it's intentional sure right yeah but but, yeah, but if you're yeah. trying to make a warm like if you have a warmer color just throwing black to it doesn't make it darker you actually have to add a more of a, a warmer color like a, a brown something mm -hmm. like that that makes a good um, a good you know uh, shade 
Um, even in like red, like you used to use, and this is interesting because it's it's jumping across from cold to, to or from hot to cold, warm to cold. When you're painting red, you what color do you usually use for a shadow? Uh, lately, it's been black, but but blue. before that, yeah, yeah, blue or purple, blue, and you, yeah, yeah. totally. So, because then it it and it has something to do with just the way the eye perceives it. If you use black in there, it goes one way, but if you use more of a cool color, that shadow turns into a different thing. I've and been I've been liking that starker look to just sure. bring things down to black. It yeah, gives yeah. it that that heaviness, but. But if you want something crossing, to be a little bit more yeah. naturalistic, yeah, yeah it's, it's like how far do you want to go? Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. So I, I always have a bottle of Vallejo black and white handy. Mm -hmm. I can say that much because okay. as I'm searching and you know I run out of a color, I go to the store and I replace it. Maybe that brand isn't available. That's what leads me to buy something else. And that's how this like set of Frankenstein colors came to be. And that you just you find your favorites. Yeah. And I can't and say that there's one company that does everything right. Oh no. Absolutely. There's not. always like the three or four you're like, ooh, yeah. yeah, not so good from that brand. Like I, the first, speaking of a monument again, like last year I bought, because I'm always looking for a good white, because that, again, that's a really difficult color. Yep. Sometimes they're way too thick or whatever the problem is, or they're too watery. So I was like, I was, you know, I was at, um, I think it was LVO 2019 and they were there and I was, I was talking to the guy about it and he kind of convinced me. And so I bought a bottle of white. That's all I bought. Yep. But it is probably my favorite white. You know what I mean? So that's really cool. But there are... I mean, I still, like, for silvers, I cannot find anything better in my mind than Vallejo's, um, and it's actually their, their their model air color. Oh, yeah. So it's yeah. airbrush, but it's a chrome. And it, you put it on, it's super opaque, one coat, super, just really, like, smooth, no brush strokes, because that's always the big problem with metallics. If you want to talk about pigments being bigger versus smaller, metallics... To give it that quality, right, yeah, exactly. you need like pieces of metal. It's literally, yeah, <laughs> it's, it, right? it's what like, it's in there. So that's why so many yeah. metallic paints can be so chunky and you get so many brush strokes when you're starting to paint with it. But if you can find a good one, and that's why I like the, the Vallejo um, airbrush metallics because they are so much thinner, but I use a brush to put them on in most situations and they cover great. <laughs> Again, with, with like the helper colors, I paint, I'm making a silver sword. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make por mix portions of black into it as I go into the shadows. Yep. Or maybe, uh, let's say the model is standing in a jungle, mm -hmm. portions of green, maybe cover it with a like a thin coat of ink to add that, you know, it's reflecting its environment. Right, yeah. <laughs> You've got a, throw that a in there. metal it's sword so out in the in the jungle, it would have some green in it. Yeah, oh, that yeah. totally makes sense. I get that. Yeah, I mean, it's... I, I've so been, and, until we make our own brand of paint, I can't tell people which one to uh, is right. the best. Once we decide to become uh, manufacturers, <laughs> then it's then, nothing, yeah. nothing but that. Everything else is hot garbage. No, it's that's the thing. I, other than and, – and I've even seen people do okay with Apple Barrel, you know, from the from the dollar store or whatever, those big, you know, dollar big chunky things. We'll edit that out. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying no, I've seen right. it. I've, not seen, I have not, those, man. I, I throw them on, on scenery and stuff yeah, too. Oh, it's, sure, yeah. yeah. And I've even seen people do – okay stuff you know with normal miniatures but it's not great they are considerably cheaper but you also i think you end up having to water it down so much i don't know i just in general if we're going to give any piece of advice buy actual paint design for miniatures that's a big deal yep and because of the size of the pigments that's the big deal um it's also the the binding agents that are in there and that kind of stuff and it helps to like because you can over thin a paint to the point where it becomes not a wash and not even really a glaze, but it, can, yeah, there's it a, can, you get tide marks and it can be weird. There's a point where the scale just tips and there's too much water for the paint to like stay bound mm -hmm. and it's going to float on top of it. And that's when you get that that little like mud puddle or coffee stain, people call it sometimes. Yeah, because uh, paint is not just pigment in water. It's a different thing. I don't 100% know what it is, but it is yeah, not just there's, pigment there's and a, water. like binding agent and different mediums. We know. totally did a whole bunch of uh, research on this before we started yeah. this. I can't remember the word and it's, it's, it's I don't know, but someone smart in the comments will tell us. The fact is, is that when you start adding water to it to thin it down, and there are also different companies have also got their own thinners too. And sometimes if you find a thinner or a flow improver, you use flow improver a lot. When you find mm -hmm. a combination that works for you, then you stick with it because us all being artists, we're, we have our own processes. Processes? Processes? And whatever. Process. Process, yes. And so 
<laughs> understanding and finding that is part of the deal. You have to sit down and sort of be like, okay, well, this is how I'm doing this. And when someone else comes along and says, hey, that, that paint's not, not good at all, and you're like, cool, I've been doing this with it. And then they go, oh, gosh. It, it's, it's the results, man. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. And, uh, it's, and it's what works for you, really. It's easy to pick on the, the big guy. Like a lot of people um, look at the Citadel brand and they're like, oh, these paints aren't, they aren't so good. But I was watching an interview with Richard Gray, mm -hmm. uh, an artist I really admire these days, did an interview on Warhammer Weekly on yeah, his yeah. channel. He uses Citadel paints and it's like, there's proof in that pudding. Oh, yeah, absolutely. man, what he does, I'm sure he has some, some other colors, but it, yeah. it's, it's really hard to say like, this one entire brand is is a no no, which or or good. Is, yeah, you can't go either way. It's, it's going to make things just more confusing for people. But like, mm -hmm. I think the the method is to uh, just slowly expand and find what's the best for you. Uh, work with what you have before you buy. Yeah, the set of three hundred bottles of paint. Right, that's. It's Find, never cheap and no, yeah. I, I, my, my. If you're a beginner, this is this is what I would tell you to do. And just let me know if I'm doing this right. Uh, start with what you can get locally. Start with what you can find and see if you like it. If you're constantly having troubles with it, then start trying to find another brand maybe. And if that works better for you, then maybe you start to move in that direction. But there's probably generally going to be. Let's say you found two colors in this particular line you didn't like, but there are four colors you did. And mm -hmm. then you find two colors in the next line that replace the ones that you don't like over here. And then, and that's how every painter I know in the world pretty much ends up with <sighs> that's, so many different yeah, brands. That's how all the pieces fit together. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Um, Just like life, there's, there's no right answers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> that's the tabletop minions way. You find your own path, you make an informed decision. That's, sure. That's all. And then leap wildly. Yes, <laughs> sideways, <laughs> asymmetrical warfare in the jungle with that sword. <laughs>